Welcome to a video from the digitallifestyle.com. In this video, we're going to have a look at this ReadyNAS 102 from Netgear. So this it was a discless supplied version. So this is going to give us backup and movie music streaming, mobile access, um, and for around the home. And you can install services on it and things like that. So we're going to take a look at it in this video. So this was a discless one. I put my own disc in there, and there's a little bit of initialization process which you can do. Um, and then the rest of it you can configure over here from the PC, so which I'll do that. Just before I go through it, uh, I'll just show you quickly on the front here we've got the power buttons and some disk activities, like we've got a backup button, a USB 2 port, and around here on the back we've got two USB 3 ports, eSATA port, power and network and a Kensington lock. So uh, you can expand the storage on there. There's two drive bays on this one and um, as you're in there, so the disks that I put in and then a spare uh, drive there so you can have them in different configurations so we'll have a look at that through the PC. So in the box you get the device, power supply and network cable and setup instructions. Let's we'll have a quick look at it first. So It feels nice and solid, it's quite heavy, metal construction on it. At the back we've got um, it's at a port, two USB 3 ports, network, and I think it's a Kensington lock and the power. Uh, on the front, we've got another USB port, I think that's USB 2. Backup buttons, activity light power, and in there are the two uh, drive bays. Okay, so here um, I've gone on to uh, readycloud.netgear.com and then you run this detect, and there it's detected it. Now, this hasn't been set up, so we can run the setup with it. I'm going to do the online installation and I can uh, first do, so I've got to create an account. So I'll do all that and then we'll see how the setup goes. Okay, so uh, I've done my account, so I've got to press the backup button on the box, which I've just pressed. And you can hear a bit of disk activity. And while I'm waiting for that, I should mention as well, it's it's fairly quiet, There's a bit, you can hear the disc, uh, it's, it's a fairly old disc, the one I had already, and you can hear the fan on the back as well, so it's not silent, but it's not by any means loud, and if you have it tucked away somewhere, then it's certainly nice and quiet. So we can now go through the setup on this, so uh, we can... Um, so we'll do the web portal option to get started on this. So there's three ways we can set this up, but we'll do the web portal version, I think. Okay, so there we go. So we've no content on there at the moment. Uh, but what I'm going to do uh, is I'll copy some content to it. And I'm also going to try and install uh, a couple of media servers on there as well. So uh, I'll I'll pause the video and uh, then we'll come back and see uh, about how we can actually use it. So I've just plugged a USB device in there with some, uh, which I know has got some videos on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this over to the main drive and then we can use that for sharing out and testing things. So I've got the... Uh now it's connected up here and this is the browser UI for it and I did say I copied some data over so I've done that. So let's check how we can access it. There's a few different ways. If we go here on the network I can see devices available and there is the ready now. So if I open up Windows Media Player You can see they're ready now, and there should be some content on here now. So here we can see some content, and I can stream that. I just put a random selection on, really. There's all sorts on here, um, and I can stream music on here. So I can. So play some music here through Windows Media Player. It's picked it up as a DLNA server, 
and that's my music available on there. Same thing goes for videos as well. I can have a look what videos I've got on here. Yeah, there's some videos on here I can play. Um, th these are just videos that I copied over uh, from a USB hard drive straight onto the device itself and then I'll play through DLNA. So any delete DLNA player should work with this um, that can read the network. So it could be smart TV, Xbox One, Windows Media Player, uh, Android, iOS, any devices can access that. So it's not even using it as a, as a network share or anything like that. This is just using DLNA which is uh, really good. So you can see here some of the share options. I can choose whether it's available over SMB. I've got the full rights over the folders. Uh, I can make it available via FTP and even HTTP. Let's do that. Let's give everyone access to everything. Deal of day. You've seen with the music. That's how we can we can turn that on as well. And even with iTunes as well, we can make it available in iTunes. So you can see we've got all these options to make it, uh, 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 content available from other devices. So there is the uh, UMC share for it, ready now. There's that folder we just shared out, the ISO in it. And um, let's have a go, copy a file over. And really the limitation speed of this is nothing to do with the NAS, this is just the network speed. I'm on wireless up here. The NAS is plugged into a wire connector. And uh, if we had a direct Ethernet connection it would be a lot faster, obviously. But it shows that you can do it. So you can use it to store... Let's cancel that. So you can use it to store documents, you can use it to store ISO files, and you can use it to store media as well. So. We go back and look at our videos folder. This is what we were looking at before. So we could choose to play a video directly from this folder and uh, it will play as a file share. So it really it's up to you how you want to access this, whether you want to use DLNA, FTP, uh, UNC, uh, UNC share, or uh, over the browser, or whatever you want really. It's uh, very flexible and uh, you can even, I suppose with Windows, you could map a drive to that and um, so I can map a network drive to that to that folder um, and then that is available all the time on this machine then whenever I'm on the home network um, and you can access that content directly as a, and use it for backups and other things. So it's got apps as well, there's a whole series of apps you can install antivirus, um, here's one of my favourites, DVB Link TV server, you can install that. You can then uh, USB tuners or network enabled tuners and use it for running live TV. You see I've done those on previous videos. You can put WordPress on it, you could uh, install MB server on it, Plex server. So you've got plenty of media server options available and uh, there's loads, BitTorrent. Uh, Logitech Media Server, so if you want a bit more advanced server than the DLNA server we've been using, this pushes it a bit further. Um, Sugar CRM, there's Plex Media Server, um, so I use Plex already, and that's a nice way of, of uh, media streaming that you can access from outside your network. So, for example, with Plex, you can uh, you can install Plex on here, have all your content on it, and if you've got a Plex account, you can access it via the internet, via one of the Plex apps, and Plex is a media server. The Plex media server is free. There are uh, app, client apps available that you uh, you pay for. MB has a similar uh, thing. You, you, MB server, you can install it with Media Browser, install it on there, and access your server content around the home using MB apps. There's an actual Plex app for the Xbox 360 as well. There's a Plex app for the Xbox One. So you can really get the whole thing running as a, a media server. The only thing is, this is not a particularly powerful box, this version, so if you've got a lot of transcoding to do, it could struggle. You may want one of the higher spec devices. But for media access, this is fine. So this device that I'm using, the 102, um, comes without drives, so that was £99, and then you can uh, buy it with drives, or you can fit your own drives. I fitted my own drive. It's It's got a lot of flexibility, you can use it for network storage, you can use it for backing up data. 
you can use it for media serving like with with apps like that and uh, you've got options of doing backups and uh, you can even back up to the cloud as well so you really got a lot of options uh, on this so it's about £100 on Amazon um, without any drives I put my own drive in there you can buy it with drives you've got the option of two drives there for RAID for extra data protection you can back it up to the cloud with this uh, you can put all your media on there, documents, you can use it through FTP, HTTP, DLNA. You can install media apps like Plex and MB or WordPress. Uh, you can just use it as a share for all your photos in the home. And you've got different options like for USB to uh, bring data in. So it really is a, a nice little device. Uh, this is the lowest powered one of, of the range, but they do go up if you've got more transcoding needs or whatever. So a really nice little device and one I'm going to be keeping around for uh, storing uh, data on and for media serving. Thanks for watching this video. More videos on thedigitallifestyle.com.